lived in the 70s, 1970, I was age 14 and graduated from college in uh, 1978. All the best teenagers. Right. It was really heaven here in the 70s. Oh, that uh, sounds amazing. Uh, on all levels, rent, uh, people, the fun we had, it's so different. You know, I, I grew up in a pretty protective home, and so everything was kind of done for me in a way. So when I got to drive myself, I was thrilled. You know, and you could go places and find new things. You know, go out and go to a bar or go listen to music. I didn't even mind doing errands. I was coming out to Los Angeles to become a movie star. So my grandmother said, pick out a car and I'll pay for it. And I said, fine. A brand new Mustang convertible, louvered hood, lime green, $3,300. My first car was whatever was available in our garage. It would have been a choice between a Rambler station wagon or a 1967 Mustang, I think. Crank windows. I might have had FM radio, but I'm not sure. And the seat belts, I think, were strictly seat belts, not over the shoulder. At least they had seat belts. Well, yeah, they were just <laughs> coming out with the shoulder straps in high school. Stick shift which took me a little time to get used to. Canvas top, and I drove from Milwaukee to Los Angeles without stopping. I like to drive that one because I felt cool driving that one. Yeah. But, uh, I would like to drive that car. Yeah, it's better than a Just minivan a, that you got to drive those as your first car, wasn't it? My first car was a Ford LTD. It was an old police car, same model they drove, but it was a hand-me-down from my sister to my brother to me. It was called the Teenage Wreck because my brother was in a wreck, my sister was in a wreck, and eventually I was in a wreck too. That was the, the, the beater car. I did hitchhike a couple of times. What? <laughs> <laughs> and that was so, That's so stupid. That sounds fun. It was kind of fun. It was easy and fun and maybe we were foolish. And I remember even hitchhiking with my girlfriends and I would pick up hitchhikers. When, when did you do that and when? When I was uh, looking for a job and I hadn't bought another car yet. The bus service in Minneapolis is not very good. You know, I went out to a job interview and it was in a suburb and I, I thought I won't get back until eight o'clock at night. So I just went to a main road and I hitchhiked and hmm. some fella picked me up and he drove me there and I felt very lucky. I think it was kind of dumb, but most people are good people. So that time nothing happened. In fact, I hitchhiked to Florida once from Milwaukee to surprise my debutante girlfriend whose parents freaked out that she even knew me. I met her at Marquette University. They sent her there to meet a nice Catholic boy. And of course, she was rebelling against her parents. She wrote them that she was dating this nice young Jewish actor. No, we couldn't. I went to college in Illinois, and I think they changed the drinking age from 18 to 21. And I remember one of the gals in my sorority said, hey, can I borrow your ID? Because I was a little older than her, and we looked similar, so <laughs> I would let her use my ID. When, oh, yeah, that's right. So a she lot. could, yes, I did break a couple, or at yeah. least allowed other people to do that. Wasn't it 18 in Wisconsin, though? Yes, because you know, when I was in your room, I happened to find that you had this oh, no. little, uh, I think it was a fishing license? I, it was dated. I had a fake, uh, I, my yes. fake ID got botched. I went to a place in Canada when I was in college. It was supposed to say 1990 to make me look a little older than I was, but instead it said 1909. Oh, you're <laughs> kidding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. I'm like born in like a. prehistoric time. I didn't even yeah. throw that away, I don't think. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know you liked to fish. You got the wrong guy here because I'm tone deaf. I had to listen to music that didn't have a beat that was kind of poetry-like. So the closest would probably be John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman. And I'm tired of wearing cardboard in my shoes. From the 70s, my mother was a fitness instructor and so I did love uh, Donna Summers. Being kind of how I look, and my personality, 
I'm a huge Weird Al Yankovic fan. I love his sensibility and his comedy. I just adore everything the man does. Actually, it's kind of, I feel a little guilty about saying this, but um, when I was a sophomore in college, I think Boston came out. And it's like real heady rock, and it's not particularly arty, but I loved it, like more than a feeling. <laughs> I mean, they had a I lot like of good song. songs, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I liked Led Zeppelin. Stevie Wonder was wonderful. David Bowie, I could keep playing Ziggy Stardust about 20 times, you know. Moody Blues, that became uh, hotly. I didn't like the Moody Blues. Yeah, that was <laughs> sort of a debate. <laughs> a lot of different ones. Um, not so much until later. I really, uh, I didn't discover her until I was more interested in art. I like some punk bands. I really like The Clash. Yeah, there's a lot of cool music that was born in like mid to late 70s, I'd say. I think you get to revisit those things. You know, I did. I didn't like them at the time, but they were cool now that I go back and enjoy them. I actually think I like uh, 70s music more now than I did when I was at home. And you're not forced <laughs> to listen to it yeah. or whatever. The 70s, people really had all the fashions figured out for the 60s. So a lot of those fashions went on into the 70s, you know, patchwork things which people would make. Or I had a lot of patches on my jeans. A couple of my girlfriends were saying, remember macrame belts, which they could make. Macrame is made from rope, kind of hemp type of rope. Looks a little bit like crocheting. It's like kind of square knots. And they're also classic plant hangers. Let's see. Oh, decoupage was invented, I think, in the 70s. It's a collage. Pictures, and you assemble them, and the decoupage would go on these box type of purses and then cover it with varnish so it has a little bit more weatherability, I guess. I actually love 1970s fashion. She gave me a couple of pieces that she used to have, like this from 1970s Berlin, right? Mm -hmm. It's a Beatles shirt with like multicolored Beatles heads all over it. And then she has these like jeans that she painted that are bell bottoms that are all ripped and stuff that I wear sometimes. I really kind of like the women in suits kind of vibe of the disco suits I, I think of mm -hmm. when I think of the mm -hmm. 70s. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. We're that right now. <laughs> That was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> it's a, it was a mixed bag because I really enjoyed meeting people and going out with them, but then I wasn't really into just sort of going and spending the night with somebody I met. Dating was wonderful. We really had to work to get our girls in bed. In the 70s, sexuality was just fun for everybody. Dating, screwing around. What are the chances of a girl meeting somebody that she might want to spend some time with in this club? 100%. Yeah, what, what do they say today, friends with benefits? <laughs> I would always want to have a boyfriend, but then, you know, the next step is making that commitment. And that's the part where it always got a little difficult. When I would go out on dates, sometimes we would go to these discos and everybody danced on the dance floor, of course, and then a fair amount of alcohol in the mix, too. It was very liberating. It could be really exciting, but it could also be very uh, anxiety-producing, I'd say. How is that different for you, Sophia? Like, how do you meet people? Not too differently, actually. I'm kind of anti-online dating. I've kind of burnt out on social media in general. Kids today are so uptight. They don't have time to talk to each other. They're texting or trying to get ahead in business. You know, I meet people just kind of out and about. You know, I meet people at coffee shops, bars. I have dated people I've worked with. I do not recommend. Well, I've always known my uncle to be a ladies' man. He definitely had uh, quite a number of female uh, partners over the years. What is it, over 600 now? Uh, <laughs> you know, I set up his dating profile um, and uh, what's, what's the name of the app for him? Senior Meet, and it's M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T. <laughs> <laughs> That was a family thing we did together, was watching TV shows. I watched The Monkees, Here's Lucy, but that wasn't that great. Mary Tyler Moore show. You might just make it after all. 
my mom moved to Minneapolis because she watched the Mary Tyler Moore it's show. It's embarrassing how dumb that no, sounds. No, it's cute. I, well, I think she's really like kind of a sparky and sincere. A young, think, like yeah. career woman. Not jaded. Yeah, that, it, it does come under fire, I guess, for not being feminist enough. Right. But for its time, right. I think it was pretty cool. Yeah. We may not have come out together, but we'll always be together. Because you can't divorce your brother. They don't have those anymore? They don't have variety shows anymore? I think of like a circus when I think of variety oh, shows. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, this is where they get a main star, some kind of anchor person who had charisma, and that person would host all these other guests on there. Like Sonny and Cher, I was sort of mesmerized by how beautiful she was. You're the one that's always saying, my mother has a fantastic memory, so what are you making a point? That's what I've said. An elephant never forgets. I can remember Tom Jones because he would have like Wilson Pickett and they sang a duet together and Wilson Pickett is one hell of a singer and the two of their vocals were real strong together. She the holy girl I know yeah, she is She really loved the soul in the midnight hour And Flip Wilson was really funny. He had Geraldine was his alter ego. Geraldine, you were always the brightest child in the class. That's ridiculous. I was the darkest one in the class. <laughs> Actually, as she was saying that, I was thinking, yeah, I'd love to go to like a live version of that or watch it like on TV or something. It sounds yeah, fun. Yeah. They should bring them I back, bring you back. guys. The phone. Yes, when you're living at home and the phone rings, it could be for anybody, but you kind of hope it's for you if you're hoping so-and-so will call you. So if <laughs> one of your siblings answers the phone, it's like, oh, who's this, you know? <laughs> but uh, that was kind of exciting. Usually up in my parents' room, somebody picked up the phone on the extension and they heard you. So who was eavesdropping on you? Well, I think my mother did a couple times, and I don't think she was meaning to, but when she would hear me say something she thought was kind of dumb, or I sounded too available or something, she thought, oh, I sound <laughs> too available, or, you know. <laughs> no. so. I forgot that you could do that, like if you have two yeah. phones in the same house, you could yeah. listen to the conversation. Oh, yeah. Did your something. sisters ever use drop on you? Well, my sister was looking out the window once when some guy gave me a kiss, and she goes, oh, did he kiss you on the lips, too? Oh, you know, that's none of your business. <laughs> Again, it's you know, like Catholic Privacy. Family. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, it's very easily I kind of think about getting a landline just in my apartment sometimes because I'm so like addicted to my smartphone. That it'd be nice to just to talk to somebody on the phone. I enjoy long phone mm -hmm. conversations, actually. Um, well, yeah, I definitely feel that there is very little communication actually going on these days. It is all digital. I really enjoy those restaurants where they'll give you 10% off if you leave your phone in a box. Although that's, that's, that's a hard thing to do. But yeah, when I hang out with Leon, we try to spend as little time uh, on the phone as possible. I don't know how you can put it in its place. These are really good innovations, but I don't know how you dial it back so it is not so pervasive. It's a double-edged sword because it is useful you meet interesting people online, you find out about interesting things online. It's like an extension of the self in a really unhealthy way. You can, right. if somebody has like a passing thought that's like really messed up, you just put it out there for eternity. And it's like, yeah. I feel bad for people who kind of take the fall of like their worst moments. You certainly worried about what people thought of you, but you didn't think it was gonna be all over and all these people on social media who you don't even know may have seen something. And I mean, they couldn't back then. I think I would love to just to take a time machine and like go and live there for a day just to absorb everything and see what it was like. You know, it's such a multi-sensory experience, I think, living in a different time. I live in downtown LA and they are always shooting period pieces down there and they make it look like, you know, 1970s New York or different periods of time. But I think actually being in a different time must have felt so different, like the way it smelled, the way that people dressed and ate and talked to each other, like even accents I think have changed over time. It was easy, easy times then. And another thing I think is, is loneliness. We weren't really lonely in those days because we had people to talk to. We had to be with people to socialize. And today people don't have to be with people because they have their cell phones, they have their Twitter, they have their texting. So when you get off that computer, you're by yourself. And I think 
That is the biggest difference of my 70s generation. I would really like to experience the traffic in the 70s. There was none.